The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Ever read this sort of advertisement in the real estate section of the newspaper or the personal columns of a magazine? Young Austrian couple, no children, no pets, would like to exchange their gemütlich alpine chalet for New York apartment two to three months. Please write, etc., etc., etc. If you had read that, would you be tempted to try it? Don't. It could work out nicely, but uh, then again... I don't know, Moira. I think something flew into the room. Something? What? A bird. Uh, like a huge gray owl. We shouldn't have left the window open. I'm glad we did. It flew right out. Again. Our mystery drama, The Ghost Gray Bat, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Don Scardino and Jennifer Harmon. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The advertisement I began to read to you was the actual one that Alec and Maura Grant answered. Maura was interested because Alec was exhausted from overwork and she felt he needed a long vacation. Alec, because they had recently been married and so far had been denied a honeymoon. Outside of these two small concerns, they had nothing in the world to worry them. They were blissfully happy. The gods were good to them. How fortunate. Except it was Byron who said, Whom the gods love, die young. Professor Grant. You don't have to be formal. It's just me. Oh, who's me? Your wife. Oh, that is. Darling, <laughs> the most marvelous thing just happened. It came. Oh, that's nice. What came? The letter from Frau Gottschalk in Austria. She's charming. There's a picture of her and her husband, and they look like dear people. And the house is a dream, and they want it. Well, they want to exchange. Only they don't own a car. But couldn't we just rent one there and... and hey, honey, <laughs> slow down, will you? Oh. When are you coming home? I'm just finishing up. I had to empty the drawers and get all this junk out of poor Murray's way. Well, you're only going to be away from the university for a year. It's still your office. Not while I'm on sabbatical leave. But it's all done. I should be home within the hour. Oh, hurry, darling. I'm just bursting with all the news about Austria. I'm Dr. Alec Grant, and my sabbatical leave began at the beginning of the summer. I hold a full chair in philosophy at Gotham University, and my intention was to spend my sabbatical year finishing a book. When Murray Sprague got in a bind and asked me to take over a summer course he was teaching in comparative theology, I would have turned him down, except that it was he who was covering my courses while I was on leave. It was a stroke of luck that I said I would. First, because during the course, I learned more than I wanted to know about demonology, but mainly because I met Moira and we got married. There's only one hitch, Alec, provided you think the house sounds right. Moira, it sounds too good to be true. I mean, right on its own lake, isolated but only ten miles by road from Winterspot, <laughs> ski trails everywhere, and enough peace and quiet for me to finish my book. So what's the hitch? We won't be alone. Uh, I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> what are we stuck with? An ancient dachshund? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Just a housekeeper. But we don't have to pay for her. That's bad? I think it's good. What's she like? Well, she's sort of an old family retainer, but Gretel says she cooks like an angel and disappears right after dinner every night, and you never hear from her till you're ready for breakfast in the morning. Uh, Gretel? 
That's Frau Gottschalk's name. Her husband is Hans. Oh. oh, isn't it too much? Hansel and Gretel in this divine gingerbread house waiting for yeah, us. Uh, plus a built-in witch. Oh, <laughs> now that's unfair to Frau Zopper. Gretel says she's a dear old thing and will take care of us like we were her own children. Well, I don't need anyone to take care of me but you. Oh, <laughs> and you know how totally I want to possess you, surround you, make you all my own. Well, you don't have to try. You got me. So we are off for the Austrian Tyrol? Well, aren't there arrangements to be made? How do you know they'll like this old dump of ours? Uh, I mean, mine. That's all settled. I've described it and sent pictures. When do they plan to arrive? A week from Saturday, the morning of the day we leave. Mm -hmm. We'll have a whole day to show them everything and help them get settled. Well, I hope they don't miss their plane. Oh, stop trying to put the hex on all this, Alex. Anyway, your child bride was smart enough to cover that. Mm -hmm. How? Well, if by any chance things get crossed up and they don't arrive before we leave, Betty Sprague has the keys and she'll settle them in. Uh -huh. And they know about that? Of course. I mean, you've heard from them since you wrote them? Natch, worry wart. Uh, I don't mean to sound that way. It's just that, well, why didn't we just get them on the phone and work out all the last-minute details? Oh, well, that's the one thing I didn't mention. They don't have a phone. They don't? Well, who needs it? We can shut out the rest of the world. Oh, isn't it heaven? <laughs> well, as long as I share it with you. The idea of being that isolated was heaven to me. I couldn't put my finger on what niggling little thought kept sputtering in my brain like a loose electrical connection. And in the face of Moira's enthusiasm and shining expectation of our projected trip, I didn't have the heart to allow anything to spoil it. I never dreamed my random hunch would turn out to be true. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Grant. Is that the Gottschalks? Shh, what? A cablegram from Frankfurt, Germany? Right. No, please, read it to me. Have you got a pencil, darling? Mm, right here. That's correct. Just read the message. Mm. Missed connections here. We arrive New York a day late. Sorry we will miss you. But please not to delay your departure. Frau Zauber expects you. We will contact your Mrs. Sprague and all will be well. Auf Wiedersehen, Hans and Gretel Gottschalk. Uh, yes, thank you, operator. I have it. No, no, a, a copy will not be necessary. They missed the plane? Or maybe you ought to take up fortune-telling. I'm sorry, darling. Oh, I, I didn't mean to bite at you. I, I'm just disappointed. I would have liked to have met them. Well, do you want to cancel our flight? And... Are you kidding? That's a special excursion deal that saves us a fortune. Besides, we have to pick up our car in Munich. We don't want anything to go wrong with that. Okay. And we'll let Betty Sprague handle our German cousins. Austrian. Oh, my apologies to the Grand Duke or whoever. I think it's the Chancellor. <laughs> anyway, we're going on a honeymoon in Austria, darling. And we're going to love every minute of it. It's so easy to be prophetic in hindsight. But some chill tremor, even then, closed around my shoulders like a shawl. I shrugged it off because Moira was sizzling with delighted anticipation. The plane flight across the Atlantic was uneventful, except for Moira's constant happy chatter about the new life we were headed for. By the time we got to Munich, she had me decked out in rose-colored glasses, too. And all my doubts had evaporated. We picked up the car at Munich in the early morning, and by shortly after lunch, we found ourselves arriving at the end of our journey. Oh, it's all so green and so beautiful. It's like driving on the floor of a still green lake. It's breathtakingly lovely. An enchanted forest. Oh, but doesn't it ever end? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Up ahead. See? Oh, that's the lake. And the trees are starting to thin. Oh, there it is, Alec. Oh, it 
is. It is a gingerbread cottage. Well, it's a bit larger than a cottage, but it's a real Hansel and Gretel house, all right. Uh, uh, with a witch waiting for us, broom in hand. Don't stop it, Alec. <laughs> she looks like a dear little old lady. Willkommen in Schlusswey House. Ich bin Frau Zauber. Uh, wir sind Herr und Frau Grant, aber wir haben keine deutsche Sprechen. Uh, ach so, it is uh, no matter. Uh, <laughs> I have English pretty good. Have you come with a nice trip? Oh, yes. The countryside is gorgeous. Oh, from Munich, you are arriving? Yes. We flew in this morning and drove straight here. Oh, I have been waiting, though. With the broom, I sweep the doorstep again and again so you will see the house at its best. But you must be tired. Come and see, Vita. I show you your house of dreams. <laughs> We entered the chalet, our shadows streaming before us from the sun at our backs. Something revived that vague, uneasy feeling I had forgotten during our journey. But the tour of the house was too fascinating to allow me to dwell on it. I might never have thought of it again if it hadn't been for what happened that night. Uh, uh what's that? Alec! Hey, what, what is the... it, darling? Uh... Nothing. I, we shouldn't have left the window so wide open. I think something flew in here. Something? What? Oh, uh, a bird. A, a sort of gray owl. Ah! Oh, don't worry. It, it flew right out again. Where are you going? I just want to have a look-see. Sounds like a storm brewing. I think I ought to close the window. Oh, soon. yes. It's gotten cold. Oh, hurry back to bed. Come on, darling, close them. Huh? Oh, yes, right. Oh, oh. here I come. Oh, you have cold feet. Yeah. Warm heart. Oh, don't <laughs> I know it. Oh, Alec, I love it here. The house is a dream, and I've never been so happy. I love you. Good night. And I love you. Good night. She was back to sleep in a second, like a child. I wasn't so lucky. Was it only a wind-driven puff of gray cloud I had just seen crossing the moon? Or could it have been what it seemed to be? A monstrous ghost gray bat? I put it out of my mind. <laughs> what nonsense. And then I remembered what it was I had forgotten when we entered this dream house. Three of us, the sun behind us, our shadows dancing before us. But it didn't seem to me there were three shadows, only two. This doesn't appear the pleasant little story it started out to be, does it? Of course, Alec has been working very hard, and he seems prey to strange premonitions, perhaps even delusions. Maybe with morning they will all have passed away. Except I wouldn't count on it. I shall return shortly with Act Two. An ancient legend has it that those who became proficient in the black arts were chased by the devil himself through subterranean halls. If he caught only their shadow, they became first-rate magicians or witches, but lost their shadows forever. The question here so far is twofold. Is there a shadow missing at all? And if there is, whose is it? Mora? Frau Zauber? Or Alec himself? Well, it's the following day. Let's see if that question is resolved. Would you like already some more coffee, Herr Grant? Uh, no, no thanks. Frau Grant? No, no. But it was wonderful, Frau Zauber. So was breakfast. And dinner last night was... was superb. Dankeschön. It makes me very happy you like it. So, 
I clear away everything. Thank you so much, Frau Zauber, for making us feel so much at home. Aber it is your home while you are here. I go make you a picnic lunch. Uh, don't worry. The mist will burn off and it will still be a beautiful day. Oh, isn't she an angel? Yes. Uh, what's this about a picnic lunch, Maura? Well, it was Frau Zauber's idea. She thought we might like to spend the day exploring. She's told me about a wonderful spot which will give us a view of the whole lake. Oh, doesn't it sound like fun? I don't know. What's the matter, darling? I was just wondering about the Gottschalks. I didn't realize how much I'd miss a phone. I would like to have run down to Wintersbad and given them a ring to see if everything was all right. Darling, you're forgetting the time difference. It's still the middle of last night at home. Oh, that's right. Uh, excuse me, please. Oh, I didn't hear you, Frau Zauber. Uh, you were talking. I didn't want to interrupt. I, I have here the picnic, all in the basket. Y you want it now? Oh, well, not quite yet. I, I want to get dressed. I, I won't be long, Alec. Oh, Frau Zauberg, you're so kind. You're making us very happy. But of course, I must. You are very... I don't know how to say... Precious to me. Frau Zauber, do you have any bats around here? But uh, Fledermaus. Ah, oh, das Fledermaus. Oh, nein, nein, no bats. <laughs> Nothing like that in this place. Why do you ask? Well, we were disturbed last night. We had the window wide open, and I woke up thinking a bird was in the room. When I went to close the window, I saw something like a great gray bat flying across the moon. Oh, and the Liebchen? She saw this too? Oh, no. Fortunately, Moira was asleep. I didn't tell her what I thought I saw. I, I didn't want to upset her. Oh, very wise, mein Herr. This holiday means so much to her. You must not disturb her. Oh, yourself? Here I am. Ready to go, Alec? Ready, willing, and champing at the bit. Then let's get the picnic started. It was everything a picnic ought to be. We ate in a meadow floating above the emerald lake. The food was sublime, and walking home over the pine needles, we were both floating on a cloud. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a day this has been. <laughs> I think you're a little high, my pet. I am. On clear air and the scent of pine and the quiet, oh, the lovely quiet. And a bottle of sparkling Rhine wine. Well, I only finished it because you were being such a teetotaler. It was making me sleepy. My arm was about her waist, her head on my shoulder. I was tired myself and full of sun and fresh pine-scented wind and peace as heavy as a drug. We floated down the hills back to the chalet to find Frau Zauber waiting for us, fussing over us like children. Ah, you are both so tired. I am a foolish old woman to send you so far on your first day oh, here. I'm fine. I, I'm just, oh, so sleepy. I've got to have a nap before dinner. I go up right away and turn down the bed. You will join her also, Herr Grant? No, I'm I'm not that sleepy. I'll see more upstairs. Uh, perhaps you'll make a cup of coffee for me? Uh, yeah, but... Oh, you... you don't have to come up, Alec. Well, I want to see you tucked in. I'll be right down, Frau Zauber. Oh, thanks for the coffee, Frau Zauber. Uh, Max sneaked. I needed it. Oh. Oh, I'm quite sleepy myself. Ah, you should be resting with the little one. Nope. This is a good chance to make a quick trip to town and make that phone call. Uh, why don't you wait till tomorrow? It's only ten miles, fifteen, sixteen kilometers to Wintersbad. I'll be back within the hour. Oh, I think maybe you should not drive. You look very tired. I'd like to set my mind at rest. You just keep your eye on... Oh, what is lost, my hair? Something wrong? Oh, no, not a thing in the world. Just a flat tire. Wait a minute. Both front tires are flat. I'll be damned. Oh, is it something bad? 
It's not good, Frau Zauber. Until those tires are fixed. One I could handle, but two. Is there a mechanic near here? In Winterspad, yeah. Well, that's great. How do I get in touch with him without a phone? Oh, Fritz comes with some milk. I could tell him to let the garage know. When's that? Tomorrow morning? Ah, uh, nine. Tomorrow's Thursday. He'll be here again on, on Friday. Oh, no. Uh, pardon. Uh, not even Friday. That's all Saints Day. It's a holiday. It will not be until Saturday. I guess that fixes that. Without wheels, I'll just have to use Shank's mirror. Excuse me? Walk. Oh, 15 kilometers? <laughs> well, not tonight, anyway. I guess my phone call to the Gottschalks can keep. Oh, maybe I'll join my wife in that nap. Uh, but supper? Why don't you leave us some sandwiches? Yeah, yeah, I will make a try. On some wine and the coffee all ready to brew. Uh, uh, will there be anything else? No. The, if I want you, where will you be? I sleep uh, in the cellar. It would be too difficult for you to find me. Well, it doesn't matter. We both probably will sleep until morning. I went to bed with the sun still high on the horizon, never having felt more tired in my life. Moira was dead to the world, and as soon as I pulled the covers over me, so was I. No! 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 What is it? Moira, what is it? Oh, I thought... I, I thought something was... was biting my neck. What? Let me see. No. No, it, it was just a dream. There's, there's nothing there. Oh, Alec, I, I'm so tired. I, I've got to sleep. Just sleep. It's all right with you here. With you here. She was asleep again. I turned the light on, but it didn't disturb her. I examined her carefully, and on the right side of her throat, just under the jawline, I saw two marks, side by side, as though they might have been made by a hypodermic. In a sudden panic, I rolled out of bed and shut the windows fast. I came back to Moira. She was breathing as evenly as I was gasping with fright. I went through the house calling for Frau Zauber. I found the door to the cellar and went down into a rabbit warren of halls and compartments with the damp earth under them smelling of decay. All were closed, frozen shut with rusted locks save one, which gave easily as I thrust against it. I stumbled through, clawing in the dark, down a long, twisting passage, dank and odorous, till suddenly instinct stopped me short. I took out my lighter thumbing the wheel and gasped at what the small flicker of its flame revealed I was on the edge of a vast cave covered with bats bats everywhere hanging upside down gazing at me inscrutably accusingly the most horrible of all was a huge worm gray one hanging by the hooks on its wing elbows its unwinking, upside-down eyes driving a dreadful hate through me like nails pinning me against the wall. Then as I raised my lighter, with a sudden powerful swing, it somersaulted upright and spreading its enormous wings, it launched itself at me with a banshee wail. The next thing I remembered was waking out of utter blackness to find myself lying on the bed with Moira shaking me gently. Alec? Alec? Uh, what? Uh, yes? What are you doing lying outside the bedclothes? I... I must have fallen asleep. Without getting into bed? Well, I was up because of... of whatever bit you. I, I wanted to close the windows and... Bit me? What do you mean? Well, don't you remember? You woke up suddenly, and 
You thought there was something in the room, and... Alec, darling, I, I haven't been awake since I went to bed. Oh, no, Moira. You... Well, just let me take a look at where... Oh, what is it? They're gone. The bite marks are gone. Oh, Alec, my darling, what's wrong? There never were any bite marks. Nothing bit me. Oh, you must have had a bad dream. Moira, let's get dressed and get out of this place. Now. I can't leave now. I'm just beginning to relax. I have to sleep. You can't, Moira. You've been asleep for over 14 hours. It's morning. The sun is up. I must sleep. Why? What is it, darling? I have to be ready. Ready? For what? Ready for... For the moment when... For the moment when... Mm. Moira. Moira. You've got to wake up. Oh, heaven help me. What am I going to do? I've got to have a doctor. And I can't leave her alone. A terrible dilemma for Alec. What strange sickness is drawing the life from his wife's body? He must find help for her. On the other hand, stark and terrible is the memory of that awful cavern peopled by the obscene and monstrous bats. Or were they only a figment of his imagination? Does he need a doctor as desperately as his wife? I shall return shortly with Act Three. If there's anything that makes my blood run cold, it's a bat. Oh, somewhere there may be a bat lover's society who wish to protect the dear little furry things with their two canine teeth as sharp as hypodermic needles. Not me, nor Alec Grant. But which was the greater danger? Mora's strange and unaccustomed lassitude or those horrendous bats which might live only in his imagination? Only he could make the choice. I listened to Moira's heart. It was steady, far steadier than my own. Her pulse was strong and normal. She breathed easily. But she was in a profound sleep that was dangerously close to coma. I had to get to a doctor. It's good and American, Herr Grant. Did you sleep well? No, I didn't, Frau Zauber. Oh, but why? I thought you told me there were no bats in this part of the country. Yeah? Why do you think there are? Because I believe one bit my wife last night. Oh, for Liebchen. I came down to the cellar after my wife was bitten, looking for you. I called, but you didn't hear. Oh, I am the very sound sleeper. Yes, I couldn't find your room, but what I did find was one door that could be opened. What do you think I found behind that door, Frau Zauber? Oh, uh, I, I have the trouble with the English. I, I don't... I found a long corridor, and at the end of it, a cave full of enormous bats. Bats, Frau Zauber. Herr Grant... I think you are having Ina Bossetram, a, a, a nightmare. There's nothing like that in the cellar. I tell you, I saw it. But then come, you show me. There it is. That's the door. Oh, but that's the door to my room. No, I show you. I couldn't believe my eyes. Beyond the door was not the twisting, shadowed corridor of the night, but a bright, neat bedroom. The walls covered with pictures, the bed neatly made and covered by a handmade counterpane, a, the furniture, a comfortable armchair, an inlaid chest of drawers, a huge and magnificent armoire. Herr Grant, you look so shocked. 
shocked. I am. Oh, you should have the doctor. You say there is one in Winterspot? Yeah, the Herr Dr. König. But how can you get to him? Well, I can walk. Oh, no, so far. Fifteen kilometers. It should take me less than three hours. I will not let you go. Why not? You trust the rheumatism in my old bones. We are to have a storm. When the snow comes, driving with the wind, you could lose your way. I'll have to take my chances. With any luck, I'll get there before it breaks. The five kilometers to the main road were a nightmare of slipping, sliding stone under my feet. And above, the sky was becoming ominously black as the temperature dropped. As I reached the main road, I had a piece of luck. A farmer with a load of feed hay in a cart drawn by a small donkey was passing. Hey! I mean, uh, Achtung, bitte. Was wollen Sie? Uh, uh, do you speak English? Uh, sprechen Sie Englisch? Nein. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Oh, no. Uh, I want to go to Wintersbad. Wintersbad? Ja. Ich, uh, gehen mit eins? Im Wintersbad? Ja. Ja, kommen Sie. Dankeschön. Uh, Ich uh, mochte eine Doktor, uh, Dr. König. Oh ja, ja, Herr Dr. König. Zurück, wir müssen gehen. I climbed aboard among the sweet-smelling hay. I was shivering and glad to pull its warmth around me. The farmer let me off at the doctor's house. The doctor was out on a house call, but his wife let me in to wait for him. She was also kind enough to let me make a phone call on my credit card. Betty. Betty Sprague? Alec? Yes. For heaven's sake, where are you? In Austria? Yes. Oh, isn't this lucky? I've been racking my brains trying to get in touch with you. Oh, why? Well, those people, your tenants, you know the Gottschalks? Mm-hmm. Well, I've been on pins and needles, Alec. They haven't arrived yet. Now, I don't mean to worry you, but... Well, that's all right, Betty. Uh, matter of fact, that's the reason I called. I had a hunch maybe they wouldn't. Is something wrong, Alec? Uh, what can I do? Uh, nothing, Betty. Uh, I'll have to handle it from this end. You don't sound like yourself. Are you sick? I don't know. Well, well, is Moira all right? I have to hang up now, Betty. You'll be seeing us very soon. Uh, tomorrow, if I can arrange it. Alec, you're scaring me. What is it? What's wrong? <laughs> I was scaring myself because once again I was blacking out. That's the way the doctor found me when he returned, and I don't know what garbled story I blurted out. It was only after I found myself gulping some scalding black coffee that I gathered my wits enough to return to normal. Very well. That is better. The eyes begin to focus now. You know me? I, uh, yes, but... I I am Dr. Franz König. You are in my consulting room. Have I told you why I am here? Oh, you have told me a great deal. You came to me under the influence of drugs, Mr. Grant. Some form of hallucinogen plus deep sedation. And you have told me a most exceptional story. My wife, Moira. You've got to come and see her, Doctor. I'm afraid. Yeah, I too am afraid for her. That is why, if you feel well enough now, I suggest we get into my automobile and drive quickly before the storm breaks to bring your wife away from that evil house. What do you mean? I try to explain that to you as we drive. <laughs> You mean that Frau Zauber has been systematically drugging us? If what you tell me about your wife is true, who else? But why? First of all, because she is not Frau Zauber. Well, who is she then? I cannot give you the whole answer to that. Uh, oh, I can tell you that her real name is Gretel Gottschalk. But her husband? Hans has been dead for the last 20 years. I wrote his death certificate myself. 
But the Gottschalks were young people, my age, uh, younger. Two generations ago, yeah. How old do you think Gretel is now? Gretel? Oh, you mean the woman I know as Frau Zauber? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, nearly 80, I would think. You would be wrong. By the records of my grandfather, who was also a doctor, she was born in 1871. A hundred and nine? But why would she pretend to be younger? Why all this masquerade about dragging us over here and pretending to exchange homes? Because she does not want to die. Gretel, or the woman you call Frau Sauber, has been shunned for the last 20 years. People are afraid of her. They believe, at the very least, that she is a witch. At the very least? What else? A vampire? There is a legend here that witches possess human bodies. And having lived out the term of the human they invade, must find a new one to violate. And she wants to invade my wife's body and steal it for her own. I say the real danger is that she believes she can. Then for pity's sake, let's get there. I'm driving as fast as I can in this weather. I... Uh, what is it? The motor. It... Uh, I, I... I can't believe it. We're not out of gas. We can't be. If we get stuck in this blizzard, we'll be buried in an hour. I don't see how it is possible. But we are out of petrol. Well, now what do we do? No one will be traveling this road on a night like tonight. <laughs> We must walk. What, back to Wintersburg? Oh, it's too far. If we are to save your wife, we go on to the Cotchrock house. The wind has built up, driving the snow before it into our faces, blinding us. It was an endless journey to the chalet, and by the time we reached it, we were exhausted. Inside the house... There was light, but there was nothing else. No Frau Zauber, or whoever she was, but more important, no Moira. Moira! Moira! Yeah, you wouldn't find her by calling for her. We must do the finding. How? We can start by looking for the witch. Uh, where's her home? Have you the flashlight, Herr Grant? It's almost burnt out. Wait a minute. There's a light. Ah, here. Yeah. As you described it, it's the night before you thought this door led to the tunnel and the cave of bats? Yes. This armoire, right opposite the door. Uh, let's see. Ah, just a clothes closet. The back is solid. But wait. There is a mark on the floor. See? From the casters on the legs. It must be hinged to swing open. Yeah. There's a hinge on this side. That means there must be some sort of a catch or a lock on my side. Yes, I have it. It's opening. And right behind it is the passage I went down that leads to... Wait. Listen. So there are bats. Yes. And that proves she's a witch. And also, you may be right, a vampire. She's got Moira. Come on. I tore recklessly down the twisting, torturous passageway. The doctor followed more slowly. As I ran, I could hear words chanted in Frau Zauber's cracked old voice. Words that chilled my blood. Oh, thou are my own king and emperor of the northern parts. I call, invoke, and exorcise thee to lend me all your awesome power to enter this young nation that I may live my new life cycle as a witch of the inner circle. I had reached the entrance to the cavern. On a slab of stone, like a rough altar, Moira lay, unmoving. 
Behind her, a step higher, that ghost gray bat was poised. The words I had heard issuing from its mouth. And behind it, obscenely a crucifix turned upside down. I fear your presence. I fear your power. What is it? I can't. A filthy pagan rite, huh? All the forces of evil and the legions of hell. What do we do? We call on him and ask him to lend us his strength. In your name, I will be reborn. As I drink her blood, I will be done. No! Stop! You are too late, Elkman. She is mine! Mine for all days! As she bared her fangs and bent to sink them in Moira's throat, I went berserk. Seizing the torch from the shaken doctor's hand, I shone it directly in her face. As she recoiled from the light, I lunged and drove the heavy oaken alpenstock with its steel-tipped end through the loathsome furry body, driving it back to pin it to that obscene inverted crucifix. I took Mora up in my arms, rushing through the mist, gasping for breath, dodging flames which were beginning to sprout from the earth. I reached the safety of the passageway none too soon, for suddenly, behind us in the cave... The floor exploded with a roar of flame and hissing steam. Doctor, is Moira all right? Yeah, she is fine. Oh, she was very heavily drugged, more so than you. But she is young... And we'll shake them off. What? What happened last night, Doctor? Herr yeah, Grant, this whole countryside around here sits on a subterranean lake of boiling sulfur springs. It happens now and then. There was an explosion. Too much pressure. It blew off like a volcano. Did you see... Everything I saw? Oh, the light was poor, and my eyes are not what they were. The mist of steam created strange illusions. That cavern is gone forever, buried under tons of earth and stone. You need fear nothing anymore. You are free of her forever. <laughs> There's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so, as Hamlet remarked to Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Are there such things as witches and vampires? I can only answer with another quote. We are what we believe. I might add that... As you have seen, Lord Byron was mistaken about the Grants. They did not die young. But then, on reflection, after all they had to go through, perhaps the gods didn't love them so much. Maybe that's the trouble with quotations, that they tend to be only half true, that we should never accept anything as the ultimate answer to life. It has a lovely way of going on, no matter what happens or what the poets say. Our cast included Don Scardino, Jennifer Harmon, Joan Shea, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.